Uh, my name is Chen. Um, I'm the technical evangelist from Amazon, and I'm based in Luxembourg. Um, before I give my presentation, I probably I'll give you a, a little bit short introduction about myself. Um, I actually just joined Amazon last year, December, so a lo long time ago. And um, before that, I was uh, in Samsung Europe. I was leading up a uh, developer relations team. They're pretty much doing the same things about talking to the conference, education developers about Android APIs. Um, and also, I'm kind of like half-time prototyping, writing some applications, sample code. Another half-time traveling, gave talks, and also I enjoy some uh, book writing. So I've been writing, uh, co-authoring co two books when I was in Samsung. One is for Bada platform, and another one is the Tizen for dummies. So that's pretty much about myself. Um, today, I'm going to talk about something called A-B testing. So I want to ask a question to the audience. How many of you guys know about A-B testing? Can you raise your hand? OK, a few, cool. Um, so I will talk about what's the A-B testing um, and what's the Amazon A-B testing service that you can use to add in some knobs or switch to your application and you can change the behavior of your application and without resubmitting or republishing your apps. Uh, here's my um, Twitter, Twitter hunter. Uh, you can add me or ask me any questions um, afterwards. Today, the agenda um, looks like this. So first, I just want to give you a quick uh, introduction or hopefully ans answer your questions why I should choose Amazon services or Amazon and Android SDK. And second part of my presentation will covering how to use the A-B testing in your application. By the way, it's not just for Android. It's cross-platform. So it's iOS user uh, developer. You can also use that one as well. And then the third part of my presentation will be covering how we can add the uh, A-B testing service in your apps within 10 minutes. It's really simple um, APIs and services to use. And then we will have a little bit of live demo and showing a little bit of code and running on the emulator, how, it's, how it looks like and how it works. So that's pretty much my presentation today. <coughs> so um, there are several reasons I was always trying to tell the developers why you should choose the Amazon services. The first one I was saying is about the user, right? Everything, every developer, you should care about your user and what kind of user base it looks like, how active they are, I mean, how they uh, purchase and behavior looks like. For, uh, for Amazon, so we have several numbers I want to highlight here. We have like uh, 200 million global account, which is the Amazon account. And the monthly unique visitors in US is around 97 million. And the daily unique visitors is about 12.9 million. That's really a huge number, even though it's in the US. And there's more interesting numbers like per, uh, visit per user per day. And they're kind of like 6.6. .6. This is like almost seven times they're going to log into Amazon.com website or log into the Amazon App Store and trying to browsing something. That's a huge opportunity for you as a developer. There are also some other information to highlight about Amazon user. The first one is about the age. You know, what kind of like uh, age your your kind of target or potential user looks like? So majority of them, like 42 percent of them, are young people, like age, uh, or no, it's about like mid age, like mid 40s. So the other people like really have the power to purchase and to buy things, and also a big portion of them are young people. You know, like 18s to uh, 34 years old, and the other people really like try new things, right? And the income, so how much money they earn. I mean, whether they are affordable about your price or charge like $199 or $299. And so there are 52%, uh, over half of them, have income in over 75 k per year. They're pretty decent incoming, and they definitely can spend quite a lot of money to buying content or apps from our store. And then if it looks like the purchase abilities for those users, 43% of them spend over $200 for the whole year to buy things on Amazon store. So that's the kind of user base. And um, if you are submitting your apps to Amazon store and how the user will kind of like have the ability to buy your apps. So that's something about the user. I think this is the number one reason I would say you definitely should considering distribute your Android apps over Amazon store. The second one is about simplicity. So the APIs that we created are not that complicated. 
And there's actually, there's a fact, 75% of the Android apps, existing Android apps, they will just work on Amazon Kindle file without any modification. So why not just try something like you don't need to do anything, but then you have a quite active user base, have more than 200 countries that uh, your apps could appear to, right? So this is really something sugar add on your uh, cake. And the APIs, a lot of them are cross-platform, so they're not just for Android or for Amazon, right? Uh, for example, they <coughs> sorry, the A-B testing service is available for iOS and Android. The map service is available for Android and the Amazon um, Fire OS. The, of course, the in-app purchase is only available for Amazon or not even the Android, generic Android. But then there's also a game platform that's cross-platform as well. So if, if you're iOS developers and you can, you want to target more, um, more than the Apple user or Apple account, then you of course can try the game circuits. So this is the second reason I would say, uh, simplicity and how to use those APIs. And then 75% of them, the apps will without modification just work on Amazon store. The third reason is always about the hardware, the device. Because I always believe there's only two facts that user will buy the device or choose the device. The first one is the applications, right? If later they can find the apps they need from that device, and then they will definitely consider about it. And the second one is about the hardware. Whether this is a beautiful device, a, a good quality, good build, and sleek UI. I think Kindle Fire HDX, the latest one, kind of answered the question. So there's really a beautiful device at very decent price point, and also they have a very revolutionary function called Mayday. I don't know how, much, uh, how many of you guys heard of it. So there's a button on the tablet. You could click the button. There's a guy appear on the other side, have a video call with you, and help you to use the tablet. So this is really some cool features that the uh, Kindle file has. And we believe that's the beautiful device. And actually, it turns out, uh, in the UK market, the Kindle tablet was kind of number one of the market share. And in the US, probably it's the number one during the Christmas time. So a lot of people buying them as a gift to give their uh, friends and families. So that's the third reason that I was saying uh, you should consider about Amazon App Store. So OK, now that's the, all the technical or all the marketing page that for this presentation. And we will move in more to the technical side. Um, so what kind of uh, user scenario or common user case for the A-B testing, like in another way, um, what A-B testing can do for you? There's a three major uh, user case. The first one, you can use the A-B testing and precisely control who is affected. So you can precisely control, distribute one version to particular user base. Right? You can use that one uh, for your kind of targeting to uh, different age groups or different gender. And also, you can use A-B testing for uh, safely test, uh, test the backend service. You know, before you launch an application, you know, for example, you probably didn't imagine that the second week or the second day, your user base will hit to uh, one million or even more, so your backend service probably crashed or didn't even handle this, this amount of the, um, uh, traffic. But then you can use A-B testing to see how user interacts uh, your application and before you officially uh, launch your apps. And the third common user case, of course, is that you can change the values, change the variables on the server side, and the application will change its be uh, behavior uh, from the user end, and you don't need to resubmitting your apps to the store. So that's the three big user case or common user case for A-B testing. Um, I will use a um, case study that the games called Air uh, Petros and um, that Amazon Game Studio developer. They're actually using, so during their development work, they're actually using the A-B testing, the R service, trying to decide or trying to measuring uh, where to include in the in-game advertisement. So I believe this is a quite important fact that for most of the free, uh, free games or freeman games, that you kind of like the major uh, revenue driving point is from the in-game in ad. And there's a lot of times like you kind of think about the question, where should I put the ads? Should I put a banner uh, under, the, under the screen or on the top of the screen? Or whether I should place the banner in the games or somewhere else, you know, without harming the game uh, play experience? 
And they also use the, the air uh, uh, patrols, they also use the A-B testing, trying to find out uh, the purchasing shortcuts. So um, where to place like them, find more games, buttons, and to get user to hit the button and buy more games from your, from your store. And then there's some other things that we're using A-B testing, trying to find out. It's the notification frequency, you know, a lot of games sending out the push notification and to the end user, well, we have new uh, gears, equipment available, or we have new levels released, um, and join them back to your game about user retention. And also the difficulty, uh, the level difficulties. So whether you set the level too easy or to allow, uh, I mean, players to get more level down, or you're trying to make it a little more difficult and spend more time into one level, and then kind of convince them to buy something to get rid of, uh, to get through this level. So this is all the questions that actually developers come across during their um, development work. And A-B test can really help in those kind of scenarios. And there's some very, very simple ones like uh, uh, promotional imageries. You know, which kind of image is more appealing to the end user? So now I will go into details about this uh, case study and how they were using uh, A-B testing can help. The first one is the image, very simple user case. So in these games, they're trying to place an image that telling the uh, end user there's a more games. So if you click the button, you will see more games from that developer from the store. The first time, they're trying to use the conventional Amazon logo, like the A with a smell. And then they're also trying to have an another alternative, which is the, uh, the, logo <coughs> sorry, the logo of our um, Amazon game circle. And then this is a simple two variations for these apps. And they were setting up the A-B testing. And the user, real user will receive probably a pic picture with the A, uh, A logo or the picture with the um, game circle logo. And then the, on the server side, there was a reporting tools. It will see which one generated more click. And then from the report, you can decide it when you officially launch these apps which image to choose. So that's really a very simple user case. And second user case is about the uh, ads placing, placing. So as I mentioned before, they're trying to see which, where to place the app, the ads, and generate more revenue, but don't harm the playing experience. And they tried very, quite bold ways. The first one is they put placing the ads in the, uh, the in-app purchasing menu. So when you buy some stuff and there's an advertisement, that's kind of like normal way developer probably would do. And, but also they tried a very bold option is in the game, the, uh, the game playing uh, menu or, or the screen, they placed a very big ad, ad banner on the top, but there's a cross button. And then they found out, <coughs> they found out actually a lot of time the player trying to close the ad. And once you can they click the cross button, you have a chance to have a pop-up and say, yeah, if you want to permanently remove these ads, you can just need to buy one item from this game and the ads will be disappeared. So this is a really a good user scenario that you found out, well, a lot of users or players will do that to get rid of the app and just spend like 69 pence to buy in-game um, tools or, or weapons. So this is the, they were using the real data using the real user to find a real answer for where to place in that. Um, the user, the case three is about notification. So it's, this is a, another simple case. You know, how frequently you want to send out the push notification, right? If you send them too often, like once a day, probably people will get a little bit annoyed. Why are you sending me once a day this game's information? And then they try different intervals. They're trying to find out the sweet spot. They're using one day, three day, and seven days. And then the report comes back, the results showing them, the three days interval get more hit. So if you're sending a notification about the game's promotion in three days, and people are more likely to click the notification and see what is inside and get, get back to the games. But sometimes if it's seven days, probably it's too long, right? Actually, the results show it's too long, and people really just forgot about the games, and then just don't click the notification. And the last one I want to 
uh, talk about is the user retention. So this is a very extremely important fact for, for get your games really um, have stickiness with the end user and get more time spent in your games and get more chance to buy your game stuff. There are two images showing like two different levels, and the level one and the level five. And they were trying to figure out uh, whether the level five should be really difficult to get uh, to cr um, play through these um, the games or this level, or whether they should make it more uh, medium difficulties or easier. And then trying to adjust the difficulty levels uh, for different level. And then they found out the easier the level is, the more time the user wants to play these games. And the more e uh, it's more likely they will go back to go back to the, this level and play it again. So that's another like, kind of a user uh, study they did with the A-B testing. So this is a, a quite like a, a soft, uh, kind of covering different kind of user case for one of the games. I want to um, showcasing you that what kind of possibilities uh, you're, you can use the A-B testing for. And yeah, actually, it's not just limited to the games. Uh, Non-games apps can definitely benefit a lot of kind of uh, uh, testing from this A-B testing service. So this is a, another uh, a sample about the report scenes on the developer portal. So you can see the conversions versus the views of different variations. And then from this, this is the real result from the real user. And then you can decide to keep what kind of uh, variations in your apps. OK, so now uh, there's a, I'm going to jump into more details about how to add the Amazon A-B testing into your application. So there's a sample app called uh, uh, Monster Tag. So everyone, if you don't have an Amazon developer account, it's, very, it's free, so just create one and create a sample Android apps. And then from these uh, apps, you can have choosing the service called A-B testing. And that will launch the, another page to asking you about the private keys. Because every um, application, when they're using the service, they have to have the credentials to talk to the server. So you will have the keys, and it's very easy. There's two keys. One's public key, which is the application key. And there's a private key. And you, can, you need to use these two keys in your code. And that's the, how you can add, add in the code. So you have uh, two, two strings for, for the keys. And when you instantiate a new credential from the Amazon Insights SDK, and then you can just instantiate a, a A-B testing. Like we call, actually, it's called instant, uh, Insight Instance with this credential. So that's why it's very simple and for uh, two lines of code to connect into the server. Um, once you have this um, application set up for the A-B testing, you can just add a new uh, test or new, actually a new project. So you click the Add a New Project. You gave your project a name, and you gave a short description about what the project is, so what kind of uh, experiment you want to do for this A-B testing. And then remember that the project name, the string, will be the one that you use in your code to get the information, the variations from this project. Once this everything is done, and then you can have other options like uh, add a new launch or add a new A-B test. For this case, we will add a new launch. So here I want to emphasize the difference between the launch and the test. So test is the something that you do normally before you launch your application or release your application. So the test have a very uh, highlighted features about conversion view, or we call it conversion event, and a view event. So this is the two one two event. You want to find out whether the div, uh, whether the user click one things and le oh. I think so. so the um, the test is have a unique functionality comparing to the launch because they have the two event, which is one is called conversion event, one is called view event. So this is the one how you're judging from your code side when you click a button and following these clicks, whether they made a purchasing or whether they, they convert something activity that you are expecting. 
So this is during the testing phase. And once this has been done, and you know which one generates more conversions, and then you can add different variations and diff the different portion of the distribution for old variation or new variation to your new launch. So that's the uh, difference between these two. For example, I have a, a new launch ad, and then I have a, a variation called uh, maximum acceleration for my games. And I have maybe acceleration is 5 or it's 10. So this is the different values you can play around. And you also can give the percentage how much users you want them to receive the value of 10, or how much users you want them to receive the old value. So that's why you can change the value in the fly and then without republishing your apps. So if everything is done now, so you have an active or, or new launch, uh, activate or start in your um, developer portal, and then you, your A-B testing or your A-B testing is right to go now. So this is how you add a new launch. And there is also a possibility that you can add multiple projects into one application. So you probably have different testing combining into one app. So you want, you want project to test the app, uh, the ad placing. You want to have another project testing the imagery things. And you probably have multiple of them into one application. That's also allowed. Uh, the code shown here is uh, you have two projects named, the acceleration project and, and velocity project. And then you can, each of them have their own variations. And in your code, it's quite simple. Because the API of, um, where is it? Uh, the API of a get variations can accept multiple projects. So you can pass uh, div, uh, multiple projects to these get variations. And once the variation is a, a return in a, um, vec, uh, a set, and then you can pass the variations name to this one, and then get the variation from a particular project. So again, like a four lines of code, you can uh, accommodate multiple projects into one application. Um, the third thing you want to do probably is to change the value on the fly, like I said. <coughs> For example, you have two launches here, and you will figure out, well, actually the, uh, the maximum acceleration, I don't, want to I don't want to have them as 10. I want to make it easier, I mean less acceleration. So probably adjust it to three and without Change, uh, without resubmitting my app. So you can do it from the developer portal and to launch, to give a new launch. So you clone this launch with the same variation names. So you don't need to change the code. The variation's name is the same. Um, and then from the new cloned it, uh, a launch, then you can change the value. For example, like uh, here you're gonna, can, you can change, okay, here's the velocity. So you can change the value on the fly. You can change the, the portions of this uh, distribution of the value, and then you can start a, the new launch again in the developer portal, and by that way, the, uh, the application will see, receive the new information on the next time when they're trying to connect to the server. So this is how you can change the value on the fly. <coughs> There's a uh, another one interesting thing you can do is more like I say, precise control of your um, end user to, ad to understand um, what kind of user groups you are targeting to. So you can do that by using the segment. Uh, what the segment is, is actually an information that, um, as I said here, you can use any kind of dimension names, whether it's a uh, string, whether it's an integer, uh, whether it's just any uh, arbitrary numbers. So for example, this sample show you, I want to, I want to find out uh, for my user, uh, the, what kind of different age groups this behavior looks like. So we're trying to s figure out, uh, so I gave the uh, segment's name or dimension's name uh, age, and then we're using so different logics. There's a, in this range, so I want to find out the a range between 18 and 20 in this age, how they behavior when they play in my games. Right, so I add a new segment, and here's the segment, like I call it testing one, I add it. Okay, so when I, when I choose the, this is another page for the project or the test. So when I start the test, there's an option that I can, whether targeting to all users without using the segment, or whether I use the segment I just created, like which is the user group, uh, the age group. So I choose the test one, and then my test is ready to go. And then I have particularly segment for this test. 
So this test will be segmented according to the age. So that's why uh, another way how we can precisely uh, measuring the user behavior. Um, to use the segment, it's very simple. Uh, another couple of lines of code. In this one, you can create, uh, for example, yeah, the, the common question I receive is, uh, how did I know the user age? Well, this is actually some trick that your apps have to do. So you can use the app settings, like the Android app settings. When people first time use their apps, you can ask some settings, like for example, you want the user to type in an age. You know, they were putting an age information. And then once you got the age information from the user settings, and then you can also get the dimensions from the server side. So to see whether this particular user is in this segment or not. So that's the code, how we use it. Okay, so this is the pretty much everything that um, the A-B testing could do for you or you need to learn about or knew about A-B testing. Now I'm gonna switch to uh, the Android Studio and give you a little bit live demo how the code looks like. What I'm going to, um, can you read the code actually? Is it too dark? Okay. Uh, okay, so where is it about? Pardon me, tell me where is it? Tools, views, tools or views, views must, must be. Okay, here is it. Okay, that looks better. Um, so first, um, I'm pretty lazy in these sample apps, so I kind of a hard coded uh, age number. So the uh, hard coded is the so every time this app runs, it's uh, pretended that the the user will be age 20, and then I was getting the user profile, which is the segment. So I passing, I want to get the segment called age, and then passing this user 20 to this segment. And then when they call in this one to the server side, they will see well whether this one is in the range or not. Then you remember that <coughs> in my uh, developer portal, oops, on to exit this presentation, okay. On this develop, okay, oh sorry, there's another one I want to show you, the code is the <coughs> when I call a, so this is a uh, segment, so once I have the segment, I want to get the variations from the, from the server, so I told you before, you get variations by passing the project's name, so I was using AB testing 3, this project, get a variations, right, get variations from the server. One quick note for this function call is because it's an asynchronous call, um, I'm kind of like lazy, I was using a runnables in my UI thread, but ideally, you probably should use a, a synchronized task in your Android apps as a different files or different thread. So instead of uh, hiding your UI and waiting for the uh, variations to get back from the server. But how, here's just for demonstrating you that I was trying to get uh, A-B testing project three, the variations, and to see whether for this particular segment, what kind of variation I'm getting from. So now I'm going to move to the developer portal. Um, here, in this uh, project A-B testing three, I have two, one variations actually with uh, three, uh, one variables with three variations. I was kind of, I uh, uh, impurposely choose 100% of uh, values to bar if the user age is larger, is older than 18. So the, the rationals here is if the user age is over 18, 100% every user will get the value bar. But if it is not, they will get value full. So that's the simple one you can test. So then when I, running this one in the uh, Amazon emulator, you see I'm getting the bar because I set them to age 20. Right, that's, does that make sense to you, this value? Okay, now I'm going to do a quick change. 
in the code. I'm changing this age to 10. So theoretically, I should get the value foo, right? So I can run this. in the emulator. We will see. It'll take a little bit of time on my old laptop. <coughs> so actually, um, because it's waiting, I can tell you if I relaunch this one, my application will be still getting bar, because there's a reason. Because if you, you, you understand when you're using the A/B testing, you're probably requiring a network connection to the server. So for some situation, like if you don't have a network connection, but we still want to use, we still allow the user to use your application. So instead of hiding there without doing anything, so this this is why that when you having application running already the first time the platform will, ca will catch the value that you got from last time. So because every user, you shouldn't allow the user get, this time it run the apps getting a bar, and next time it run the apps get a foo. So this is not good. So once they get the variation from the server, it should stick on these value, uh, the values. So that means they can constantly, without um, uh, worrying that I'm actually doing the A-B testing. So is it launch now? I think it's launched now. So what you need to do, actually, I think that's you still get the bar. What you need to do is doing this clear the application data. Oops. By dragging this. Yeah, you know, I was trying to drag down this. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit slow now. Is it still running? I think my emulator probably hung already. Let me see. Let's close this one and run again. So what I, I, what I want to demonstrate here is when you're doing these testings in, in your emulator or device, so always remember that once you change the variations or change the segment, go back to the uh, app settings and trying to clean the catch of the, of the data. And then that means you are entering a new testing mode and always able to get a new variations. So choosing Kindle. Sorry about that. It's take quite a while to wait for the emulator to launch. I think uh, instead of we waiting here, um, so that's actually all the part of my <coughs> sorry presentation. And I will show the demo afterwards. I can uh, still got ten minutes here. I can take any questions if you have. Yeah. Just a second. Require server for for some data. Uh, there's uh, some possibility to force the server uh, s to to require the data 
to, to acquire new informations. And the only possibility is the, the one that I show into you, the percentage, you know, uh, on this developer portal. So you have a, a percentage value here for distributing this value. So if you set 100%, that will be its for state for the giving out this value. But if it's less than 100%, and the server always randomly decide the, which value the end user is getting. Any other questions? It's, it's not a technical question, it's more. Okay. Uh, from from legal point of view, I mean, we are collecting uh, information about uh, users' behavior. So are we required, if we implement this, to actually ask users for permission to, co to collect this data before they are sent back to Amazon? So actually, um, this is a good question. So we, in a way, you can say we are collecting the user behavior. But on the server side, it's actually just the numbers. So it's not the user behavior, right? So there's a, I mean, for now, there's no uh, legal document or legal side involved. You are not, uh, because you're collecting maybe 10, but on the, on the server side, it's not collecting the number. On the server side, it's just, uh, it's passing a number to you, and then on your end user side, and you know it's 10, my, my uh, end user's 10, and I'm getting a 20. So, yeah, the anonymous data, and so, and you, it's meaningless on the on the server side. So. Any questions? Uh, okay, uh, um, two questions. In fact, uh, first one is how the application recognize uh, which user is which. For example, Android. Uh, um, allows you for multiple users to be uh, available from the same device. Mm -hmm. So you cannot distinguish by device. So you have to distinguish by user, uh, I, I would assume. Uh, actually, on the, on the server side, it doesn't really distinguish anything. It's just distinguished by the, by the API call, by the HTTP call. So um, for example, if there's a no segment, Every call, like the, uh, every user is just the same, behavior uh, for the server is the same. When they send out a API call to the server, it just randomly decides which number, which variation value I need to give to you. So I don't care about whether you are user A or user B. Uh, when there is a segment, like you want to fine tune for targeting particularly user, ba uh, user group, and then it's your application to collecting those user data, whether it's age data, uh, whether it's a um, gender or salary, whatever information you want to collect, and on the again on the server side, you set this segment, and if the segment falls into the basket, it's sending this value A. If it's outside the basket, it's sending value B. So they don't, still don't care about which user. That's why I was saying the privacy issue or legal issue is really minimal. There is no issue for that. Okay, and the second question is about. Uh because I, I browsed a little bit uh, the SDK for, for this A-B yeah. testing from <laughs> Amazon, and it is not clear for me if it is required for the application to be published uh, by Ama Amazon uh, App Shop. Yeah, uh, App the answer is no. It's not uh, okay. required to publish the Amazon App Store. So it's like a web service, right? You are sending a API to our server. So if your app's been downloading from iOS store, that's fine. But unless you connect to the internet and sending an API call to our server, that's fine. So that's why it's cross-platform and platform independent. Any more questions? OK. OK, let's see. Uh, OK, so the emulator is running this time. So let me try again to run this application. You can use Control F11 to trigger it. Or to
So actually, um, the reason I'm using the um, the latest studio here is I was just want to demonstrate to you um, just using the Android uh, SDK manager. Once you install the uh, Kindle SDK, it's actually work out of box pretty pretty much the same for two uh, for different IDE. <coughs> Okay, see, now it's getting another value, food. So that's how um, really easy and simple that you can set up a, a test for your for A-B testing. Yeah, that's all my presentation. Thanks very much. And um, please <laughs> remember, oh, okay. <laughs> I still have uh, one slice of wrapping, but it's fine. And so to highlight the A-B testing is free, you know, there's other a-B testing framework, probably you can find it out uh, from, uh, in, uh, from Google, but a lot of them maybe not free or maybe just free for the, hundred, for the first 100 API call and then you have to pay for it. So our service is totally free. And then they have uh, precise measuring to the behaviors using the segment and then you can modify the app behavior uh, on the fly without uh, resubmitting to your store. And then this is our developer Twitter account, and you can just follow us, or if you have any questions, please um, ask me. I will be here for the whole day. Yeah. Thanks very much. Thank you.